Hello everyone and welcome back to our video tutorial series for Kingdom Hearts 1. In this video, we cover the fight against the Phantom at the Clock Tower in Neverland. This optional boss becomes available after sealing the keyhole in Hollow Bastion, and it's a unique boss fight in that it relies almost exclusively on magic. So first, let's review how we can best prepare for this fight. Before taking on the Phantom, we recommend completing the following tasks. Speak to the Princesses of Heart in Hollow Bastion's Castle Chapel to obtain Faraga magic. Compete in the Hades Cup with the entire party up to Seed 30 in order to obtain the Tier 3 magic spells Blazaga and Thundaga. Complete the third torn page in the Hundred Acre Wood to obtain Stopra magic, and unseal the Yellow Trinity in Neverland's Hold area to obtain upgraded arrow magic from the chest on the highest shelf. It's recommended to have the party be at least level 60 for this fight, though you may find it a little more manageable at level 65. You must have Peter Pan in your party for this fight, and will keep Goofy in the party for his MP support abilities. Equip a keychain that boosts your MP and magic power, like Oathkeeper, Lady Luck, or Diamond Dust. The Diamond Dust keychain is your best option here, as it bestows the greatest boost to your MP and magic power. You can obtain it by defeating the Ice Titan in the gold match at Olympus Coliseum. We've placed a link in the video description so you can check out our tutorial video for that fight. Equip accessories to Sora and Goofy that increase MP and magic power, like the Armlet accessories, the Shiva belt, and Ray of Light. Click the links in the video description to learn how to obtain these. This boss battle takes place in flight, so the only critical abilities to equip to Sora are MP Haste, MP Rage, Second Chance, and Leaf Bracer. Be sure to equip Goofy's MP Gift ability. He can use it to expend 2 of his MP and restore 3 MP for another party member. If available, equip Second Chance, MP Haste, and MP Rage to Goofy as well. Unequip Peter Pan's Hummingbird, Timeout, and Storm's Eye abilities so that he never uses his MP. This will ensure that any MP restoration items or abilities are used on Goofy or Sora. Enter the Customize menu and add Stop, Arrow, and Cure Magic to your shortcuts. Or you can set your shortcuts to Fire, Blizzard, and Thunder Magic if you're having trouble navigating the Command menu during battle. You can also customize Goofy and Peter's battle styles so that they prioritize using defensive abilities and only use items when MP is low. And finally, equip as many Ethers, Mega Ethers, or Elixirs as you can to each party member. Talk to Tinkerbell in the cabin area while Peter Pan is in the party to access the clock tower and encounter the Phantom. When the fight begins, the Phantom will cast a Doom spell on one of your party members. This spell counts down from 12 based on the position of the hands on the clock tower. If the count reaches 0, that party member is KO'd for the duration of the fight. A Doom counter will then appear over to the next party member after the hands on the clock cycle through another hour. In order to prevent this Doom spell from taking out your party members, you need to periodically cast Stop Magic on the hands of the clock tower. Fly close and target the clock tower's hands before casting. You may have to toggle your locked on target, as the game will sometimes target the phantom first. As you fight the phantom, you'll need to periodically return to the clock tower and cast stop magic. The doom spell will be halted for 60 seconds each time you cast stop on the clock tower, but the effect does not stack if you try casting in quick succession. Now let's talk about how to damage the phantom. Unlike other bosses, the phantom doesn't take physical damage at all times. Instead, you'll need to monitor the heart that appears under the phantom's cloak to determine how to damage it. If the heart is red, you'll need to cast fire magic. A blue heart requires blizzard magic, and a yellow heart indicates that you'll need to cast thunder magic. The only time you can deal physical damage to the phantom is when the heart is white. Be sure to lock onto the heart and time your cast when the phantom is close enough to Sora. And don't worry about moving Sora around while casting. The phantom will typically close the distance towards Sora after it turns to reveal a new heart. Your focus should be on checking the heart's color and navigating the command menu to cast the right spell. There should be enough time to find and cast the right spell as the phantom approaches or when it's recovering after being hit with the correct spell. Moving on to attack patterns. Surprisingly, the phantom only has two attacks, and both can be avoided using the right maneuvers. When the phantom approaches Sora, it will often swipe with a glowing hand. You can avoid being hit by flying downward in a direction away from the phantom. The key with this maneuver is to change your vertical position slightly so that the attack misses and gives you a chance to cast a magic spell while nearby. This swipe attack can also be cancelled if the phantom is hit with the correct magic spell. After every six hits, the phantom will move to the front of the clock tower and spew out a dark, energy-draining shot that tracks Sora. If it makes contact, Sora may take damage up to five times. There are a few different ways to avoid it, though. You can deflect it with a well-timed attack, although it's very risky. If you have Tier 3 Aroga magic, the energy shot will simply bounce off and have no effect. My preferred method is to fly to either side of the clock tower so that the phantom is out of view. 
This will cause the energy shot to strike the clock tower instead, and it gives you a safe opportunity to cast stop magic on the clock tower. If you are struck by the energy draining shot, fly downward in tight circles to shake it off quickly. If you configured your party members to behave correctly, they should help restore Sora's MP with items and abilities as the fight progresses. If your party members run out of MP or items, you'll need to rely on your own stock of ethers and elixirs. A well-timed Mega Elixir can be a huge help as it restores Goofy's MP and allows him to continue using MP Gift on Sora. You should always try to have at least two MP available in the event you need to quickly cast stop on the clock tower. That just about covers it. Here are the key takeaways. Use magic spells to damage the phantom based on the color of its heart. Don't go chasing the phantom. Let it come to you and time your spell cast correctly. Fly to the sides of the clock tower to avoid the energy draining shot and cast stop magic on the clock tower about every 60 seconds. This can turn into a long fight, so use your MP wisely and wait for the right moment to evade or cast magic. Follow these tips and tricks to win the fight with flying colors and get this phantom menace to clock out. And that's the end of this tutorial. If you have any advice or tips of your own, share them with us in the comments section. If you found this video helpful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel for more content. And as always, you can find the best online walkthrough and guides to the Kingdom Hearts series at khguides.com. Thanks for watching. See you next time.